Hi, I'm Rick Dior, and today we're going to look at a really interesting drum that actually sounds great, but doesn't look so great at this point. And I'm going to sort of restore it quickly. This is a drum that was given to me by a friend, and I believe it is an old WFL Buddy Rich snare drum. But it could be a downbeat snare drum, which was made later on in the 60s. But to me it looks like this might have been made in the 50s or late 40s. So what we're going to do is we're going to open it up and see if there's white paint on the inside it was probably uh, the downbeat, the 60s. If there's not white paint and it's kind of a mahogany shell then I have a feeling this is an old Buddy Rich drum. Now the history of these drums, um, I'm not a historian by any means and I'm sure some of you are going to want to chime in, as you always do, and that's perfectly fine. And correct me if I'm wrong. But I believe that in the bebop age, that was sort of, um, you know, happening in the 40s. Uh, Ludwig was, was trying to push drummers, their endorsers, towards that kind of music, because it was all the rage. And I know they had signed Buddy Rich up at that point. He was a Ludwig player before he went to Slingerland and Rogers and wherever he felt like going at the point at that point but back then he was with Ludwig and they did make him uh, you know uh, these small drums because there were a lot more small groups happening uh, the big bands were also going on but there was also a lot of small jazz small group jazz going on in New York and Chicago and Kansas City and St. Louis and lots of places like that so these drums were made by several companies these smaller drums so I'm going to open this thing up today, and we're going to take a look at it. I'm not sure these are all original parts. The snare system looks small. So I've never seen another one of these. Of course, I've definitely seen downbeat snares. I own one. Uh, but this, it, the lugs are similar, but the inside is white. Also, this doesn't have that um, baseball bat muffler. Uh, it's actually missing the muffler. Someone took it out which was not good and uh, but you know I got it for free so I'm not complaining and it's got the old pioneer strainer which goes way back to the 20s and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the baseball bat muffler off this superphonic I have many of these and this is a pretty old one this is not chrome over brass this is just uh, the normal Ludaloy plated it's, it's the one that's in the worst shape. I have about five of these, including one chrome over brass. So I'm going to take the muffler out of here and then get another one at a later date. And I'm going to put it on here. I'm going to clean it. I'm going to put some calf heads on it like there would have been originally. And we're going to play it as part of a jazz snare drum video that I have planned. It's going to be a really long video where I talk about all my favorite jazz snare drums. I'm not interested in selling this. Uh, I'm going to keep it because someone who gave it to me is very special to me. And uh, I'm just going to keep it and play it because that's what he wanted. Uh, the other end of the strainer has this um, adjustment here. And you can see the WFL logo. We'll do a close-up here of that. That's very different than the 60s logo. So I have a feeling this is this drum is pretty old from the 50s. So what I'll do is I'll take it apart and then we'll show you some pictures of the inside. So I've opened up this drum, taking the hardware off. It is most definitely an older drum. I'm going to pick up this video camera and show you the inside. It's a mahogany shell, one piece. It's got the reinforcing rings. I think it's one piece. Looks like it is. Very, very old. In good shape. No cracks. Now the finish, which is pretty horrible. I don't know if this is original or someone painted it. Looks like someone painted it. It's got some cracks and not pretty. But I may refinish this drum. Either strip it or, or rewrap it. The favorite finish was a Blue Oyster. Pearl. A lot of people like that. Maybe I'll do that. Anyway, it's pretty dusty. I'm going to clean it. And one thing that I found is that these, um, these kinds of lugs use inserts right here. And they look like this. That's the insert. Hopefully you can see that. 
and they go bad so we have a few bad ones that's a bad one they just oxidize and basically just fall apart so I have separate inserts that I buy for my downbeat and some other drums I have with these lugs and that's what that looks like you can get these on reverb they're just inserts for this kind of lug it goes in the lug like that and then the tension rod connects it like that nothing fancy no springs to make noise nothing and then the tension rods were in terrible shape and they're actually different lengths which tells me that some some broke over time and some will replace them so I'm going to replace all these with some from a pearl or orchestra drum that I um, <clears throat> that I replaced those lugs with brass lugs so I'll replace those and then the rims are, are in pretty good shape these could have been replaced as well over time they're not die cast which is good you don't necessarily want to put die cast rims on a drum like this uh, to me a drum this small it chokes it a little so it opens up more when you put a lighter rim on it so don't put die cast rims on or a heavy rim on this kind of drum the shell is so light it can't weigh more than a couple pounds it's nothing but it really does sound good as you'll see so what I'm going to do now is clean up the rims now when you clean up the rims just before we go for this segment I use um, I've always said this uh, this mother's aluminum polish it's a wheel polish for cars I am using some tr uh, quadruple zero so four zero steel wool and you put that on there it won't scratch well, it doesn't really matter these rims are messed up anyway but uh, it won't scratch it and it'll really shine it well and take out a lot of this gunk that's on here so this is a perfect opportunity to use this stuff with that steel wool now again it's four zeros I, I believe it's the lightest steel wool you can get and uh, you can try a three zero for the stubborn ones I have some of that too and you just go around and some elbow grease and put it on there and it'll it'll come off and then you let it dry and you do the inside as well it really does wonders so I'm going to do that I'm going to clean up these rims this drum shell a little and then we'll uh, we'll take some calf heads uh, I'm going to change the muffler out too so when we get back I'll show you how I do that so we'll be back in a second so I took that baseball bat muffler out of that superphonic and put it on here but I discovered that um, the holes didn't quite line up and also one of the holes is bigger so I'd I'd have to drill it and I really don't want to do that at this point so I think what I'm going to do is wait and I have a friend uh, who specializes in redoing these kinds of really old drums and ask him uh, if he can find me the original muffler for this but in the meantime what I'm going to do since it's black I have some rack screws here that I use in my studio and they're black as well and I'm just going to fill up these holes I don't ever use an internal muffler anyway and like I said in an earlier video the Radio King video I like using these lock nuts they have plastic in them so there's no chance of them coming loose and I'll just put these rack screws in there for now and then see if my buddy Mike has um, has confined me this part which I know is going to be difficult to do because it's so old but he may have one and then I'd like to replace the original muffler just to have it on there. Now these lock washers can be stubborn, so you gotta break once you break through the plastic, you're okay. But you just make sure they're tight. One other thing that I noticed is when I um, was checking out the inside of this drum, is that over time the wood shrinks because it's so old. I mean this drum is probably about 80 years old at this point. And so you have to go around and tighten all the all the lug screws. They were most of them were actually pretty loose. Uh, so that's something that I did as well. And actually, this does not look half bad. So we'll put this on, and then I'm going to go ahead and um, put a couple calf heads on this. I'm just curious to see what it sounded like originally. You know, back then. They wouldn't have been using plastic heads. These originally would have had the calf heads. So I'm going to put a thin snare head on the bottom and a, a thicker batter head on the top. And we'll see what we got. So we'll be back. So I put some calf heads on this drum. 
and it sounds good. Uh, I put them on top and bottom. A thin one on the bottom and the top calf. So this is probably what the drum sounded like new and I also used the original snares again although the verdict's out on these. So this is sort of a lower tuning of this drum. So that's what the snare is pretty loose. Uh, if we tighten them up, here's what it sounds like. Try not to choke the drum. And these calf heads, they take a little while to settle in. So probably next week after I tighten it up, weather's a little bit humid here. It'll, uh, it'll break in. Very um, old sound. Now I'm going to crank it up. And I'm just going to go around like this. No star tuning for now. So when you crank it up, the snares choke a little. We're going to loosen those up. So I'll feature this in this video I'm going to do in a couple days uh, uh, concerning my favorite jazz snare drums. There's about 10 of them that I'll break out and uh, I'll compare them to this one. So once again this is I believe a WFL Buddy Rich snare drum 4x14 from the late 40s early 50s. Alright I hope you enjoyed this and we'll see you later.